the IoT is growing to trillions of devices, and today most of these devices are equipped with a battery. Regularly replacing trillions of batteries is expensive and poses a heavy burden on the environment. As an alternative, harvesting energy from the environment and using small capacitors as energy buffers allows to build tiny, cheap and sustainable devices that can be operated maintenance-free for decades. However, because of low energy availability and low storage capacity, battery-free devices operate intermittently. That means that the devices are forced to remain inactive for most of the time charging their energy storage. Once they reach a turn-on threshold, they become active and start to operate, quickly draining their energy storage before being forced to shut off again. This leads to the typical intermittent execution pattern, where devices operate for a short time before being forced to recharge again. An individual battery-free device can already perform useful tasks, but deploying thousands of tiny and cheap devices enables completely new applications, ranging from smart agriculture to city-scale sensing. The key problem is how to control these devices and how to collect their data. Deploying thousands of base stations in proximity to every battery-free device is expensive and just moves the energy problem from the devices to the base stations. Our goal is instead to enable two battery-free devices to communicate directly without the need of a powered base station. This primitive can then be used to build large-scale battery-free mesh networks that operate autonomously and send their data through just one or just a few base stations. Communicating between two battery-free devices is difficult because their short activity phases are generally interleaved. Here you see the execution patterns of two devices. When the device on top is active, the one on the bottom is charging and vice versa. As a result, it can take many attempts until two devices finally encounter each other. When the devices encounter each other, they only have a very short time to exchange data before depleting their energy storage. In order to communicate again at the next wake up, the offset between the devices at the next wake up must be less than their active time. But this is really rarely the case. For example, here you see the charging times of two kinetic energy harvesting devices mounted on my ankles while I'm in the park jogging. On the x-axis, you see the charging times of the node on my left ankle, and on the right y-axis, you see the charging times of the node on my, on my right ankle. Communication is only successful when a data point falls in that thin green region in the diagonal of this plot. We systematically analyze the success rate for a variety of scenarios involving solar panels and kinetic harvesters. And overall, the condition is only fulfilled in less than 4% of the cases. That means that devices will very rarely communicate on two or more consecutive wake-ups. Instead, they have to wait hundreds of wake-ups before exchanging more data. This makes communication extremely inefficient. Only being able to exchange a couple of bytes every few minutes is just unacceptable for many practical applications. We were wondering how we could do better than that, and our answer to this question is Bonito. Bonito is the first connection-based protocol that enables two battery-free devices to maintain pairwise connections over multiple consecutive wake-ups. The key idea is that devices use the initial encounter to exchange data and to agree on a common connection interval. Instead of waking up immediately after reaching the turn-on threshold, the devices wait until the, interval has, un, until the connection interval has passed, and then they wake up at the same time. And because they, they can communicate again, they can also agree on the next connection interval, and so on. These connections can last over hundreds of wake-ups, during which the devices can exchange data at every wake-up, dramatically increasing the throughput. The challenge is how devices should select the connection interval. If it's too short, one of the devices may not be sufficiently charged yet. In this example, the upper node has not yet reached the threshold when the connection interval has passed and the connection breaks. With a long connection interval, on the other hand, devices spend a lot of time waiting and have fewer encounters over time. And it also increases the risk that the clocks of the two devices have drifted apart too far. The key contribution of our paper is a method how two devices select a connection interval that is as short as possible while still providing reliable communication. Here's an overview of the proposed method. 
On top, you see what's happening on one node, and on the bottom, what's happening on the other node. Both devices learn a statistical model of their charging times. At every encounter, they exchange their models. Then they provide their own model and the model received from the other node as inputs to an algorithm to compute the common connection interval. Now, instead of becoming active right after reaching the turn-on threshold, they wait until the connection interval has passed before waking up and communicating again. And the whole process starts over. Let's look at this protocol step by step, starting with the statistical model. The connection interval must be larger than the charging times of both devices. Otherwise, one of them will not be, be able to make it and communicate. That means that the devices need to predict their next charging time. But this turns out to be quite challenging. Here's the sequence of charging times for a kinetic harvesting node. And as you can see, it's varying randomly. So it will be very difficult to predict the next, uh, next value exactly. However, if we look at the histograms instead, we immediately recognize some patterns. Here on the left, you see the distribution of charging times from a solar harvesting node, and on the right, the charging times of a kinetic harvesting node. The charging times on the left are distributed around a fixed mean that resembles roughly a normal distribution. The charging times on the right instead follow an exponential distribution. This motivates a probabilistic approach where we don't try to predict exactly the next charging time, but rather in a statistical sense by learning the parameters of well-known distributions. The parameters of these distributions depend on environmental conditions and are very difficult to predict upfront. Moreover, the distributions change with changes in the energy environment. In this example, you see how the charging times of a solar harvesting node change over the course of a few minutes while the shadow runs over the panel. To account for such non-stationarities, Bonito uses stochastic gradient descent to learn and track the parameters against changes of the energy environment. Each node observes their own charging time and updates the distribution's parameters with every new observation. Here you see the mean of a normal distribution model that is continuously adjusted using stochastic gradient descent. It takes less than, oh, sorry, it takes less than one minute until the parameters converge from their initial values to the true distribution parameters. This approach is generic and we tested it with a normal distribution, an exponential distribution, and a Gaussian mixture model with two components. Now that we've learned how to learn the charging time models, let's move to the second part of the protocol that computes the connection interval from the charging time models. Having the two distribution models, nodes can compute the joint cumulative distribution function. What this function tells us is the probability that the charging times of both devices are less than the value here in the x-axis. So for any connection interval, we can now compute the probability that the two devices can actually wake up and communicate. This is pretty useful, but it's not yet what we are looking for. If we invert the CDF and look at the inverse joint CDF, it tells us which connection interval we have to select in order for the probability of success to be any given value. For example, now we can just say we want a connection interval that guarantees that both nodes are sufficiently charged with 80% probability, and we can simply look it up in the, in the corresponding joint inverse, inverse joint CDF and get the value for the connection interval that works with that probability. To validate this concept, we designed a low-power battery-free node based on the NRF52 microcontroller. It comes with a Cortex-M4 CPU and a BLE radio. A boost converter charges a 47 microfarad ceramic capacitor from a connected solar panel or a kinetic harvester. At every encounter, devices exchange a packet that contains the type of distribution as well as the uh, current model parameters. We use this implementation to evaluate Bonito on a testbed by repeatedly replaying harvesting conditions collected from a variety of scenarios. This way, we could measure the, the duration of connections, the throughput, the additional delay, and the overhead, and compare it to, to baseline approaches. We also conducted a occupancy monitoring case study where we counted people entering and leaving a room with two nodes running Bonito. Here's an example trace from the test bit. The two graphs show the charging times of two nodes mounted in a car. The first 35 minutes, the cars are on the motorway and have varying but relatively low charging times. Then after 35 minutes, the cars leave the motorway 
and you can see a sudden spike of the charging times. The red line now is the connection interval computed with Bonito. You can see how it is dynamically adjusted to always be greater than the charging times of the two devices. That is until the cars leave the motorway. Due to the sudden increase, the first node, the, the one on the top, can't really make it to the rendezvous. So the charging time is longer than the agreed connection interval and the connection breaks. It then takes around 10 minutes until the nodes have resynchronized and the connection continues. Let's look at some key results of our evaluation. Bonito aims to maintain long-running connections, so the connection duration is an important performance metric. This plot shows the fraction of connections that lasted for the number of wake-ups on the x-axis. Over all our data sets, half of the connections lasted longer than 125 wake-ups, and 25% even lasted longer than 500 wake-ups. So this shows that our approach is indeed able to maintain these long-running connections. We also compared the throughput of Bonito to a greedy approach, where devices just wake up as soon as they have energy, and we found that Bonito achieves 36, per, uh, 36 times the throughput of, of the greedy approach. Finally, um, the online learning of the charging time distribution and the inversion of the joint CDF consume significant energy. This makes up to 25% of the energy budget that we have per individual wake up. But if we compare it to the energy required for resynchronization, we see that this is still only one thousandth of the energy um, required for that. So it definitely makes sense to run Bonito compared, um, compared with the cost to, to resynchronize for every, every single encounter. In summary, Bonito is a critical milestone on our way to battery-free wireless networks by enabling efficient device-to-device -device communication. The key challenge of varying charging times is solved with an efficient online learning approach. We believe that this is useful beyond communication. A statistical understanding of the charging times um, is also important for making application level decisions. We provide the extensive data set collected for this paper as well as a Python implementation as open source, which uh, by the way earned us the, the community award. If you're interested, you can visit our website or send me an email. And finally, if you're interested to see Bonito in action, just come and talk to me. I have two notes in my pocket, and I'm really happy to give you a quick demo. Thank you for your attention. That's, that's it, and I'm now ready to take your questions.